Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is engineering notation. Our objective is to learn to employ engineering notation in an effort to make unusually large or unusually small numbers easier to write, read, and most importantly, conceptualize. Bottom line up front, engineers and technicians use engineering notation and if you can't use or read numbers expressed using engineering format, you can't be an engineer or a technician, so pay attention because I'm presuming that's what you're here for. Over the next several lectures, I plan on performing a comprehensive review of basic math skills we'll be using during the course of this lecture series. However, I decided to push the discussion on engineering notation up front because it's super duper important. And coincidentally, the one skill most people new to the engineering game consistently struggle with. Most students that enroll in introductory electrical circuits classes know or at least have a passing familiarity with basic math skills like the order of operations, algebraic manipulation, unit conversion, and rounding. However, when someone introduces engineering notation, that's when people's heads explode. Fair warning, learning engineering notation is equivalent to learning a new language, and learning a new language takes copious amounts of practice. Believe me, you'll get plenty of practice. Engineering notation will be used for the remainder of this playlist and others, and a solid understanding of its importance and its use is essential for success in technical career fields dominated by numbers. As such, I'm encouraging you to get involved with this lecture by pausing the lecture often and working out some of the illustrated example problems by yourself. Ideally, your answer should match those of the illustrated example problem. If not, the illustrated example problem is there to guide you to the correct solution. Let us begin. Like I said before, the goal of engineering notation is to make unusually large and unusually small numbers easier to write, read, and most importantly, conceptualize. Consider the unwieldiness of numbers like 560,000 volts. 10 million ohms, 0 0.00002 amps, and 0 0.00000000033 farads. At first glance, all these zeros blend together like a herd of zebras trying to confuse a predator, and there's no way to quickly ascertain if a number is larger, much larger, smaller, or much smaller than another. Additionally, Imagine the time you need to spend writing and reading all these zeros and not make an error. Engineering notation solves this dilemma by bracketing numbers into easily conceptualized levels of magnitude where numbers can be quickly compared to one another. For those of you versed in scientific notation, as used in chemistry and other pure sciences, engineering notation is a related technique, but it's better. How much better? 10 to the third or 1,000 times better. Allow me to demonstrate. The key to engineering notation is breaking unusually large and unusually small numbers into groups of three. This is a pretty natural inclination for people that use commas to separate large numbers. Consider the number 560,000 volts. If you're like most people, you'd probably put a comma right here. Clearly this is a pretty big number. Bigger than let's say 56,000 volts, much bigger than 5,600 volts, and much much bigger than 560 volts. Yet at the same time, it's smaller than 5,600,000 volts, much smaller than 56 million volts, and much, much smaller than 560 million volts. All of these numbers have a five and a six in them, but represent startlingly different orders of magnitude. If you hooked up a device intended to operate at 560,000 volts to a 560 volt power supply, it probably wouldn't work. And if you hooked up that same device intended to operate at 560,000 volts to a 560 million volt supply, you'd probably die. For all these numbers, the five and the six are the only part that actually delivers information. All the zeros at the end just tell us how big or small this number is. All we need is a shorthand way of expressing all these zeros that saves time and space. If you think about it, you've been doing this your entire life already. Listen to my emphatic pronunciation of our original number of interest. 560,000. I say again, 560,000. The thousand at the end clearly distinguishes this from other similar sounding numbers like 560 million or just plain old 560 without any modifier at the end. 560,000 is 560 times 1,000, which is a one with three zeros. Whereas 560 million will be 560 times a million, which is a one with six zeros. Similarly, 
560 without any modifier at the end is 560 times one, which is a one with zero zeros. That's really what engineering notation is. It's a modifier added to the end of a number and in front of the units that takes place of all those zeros. The modifiers have funny names and abbreviations, so it's probably worth your time to write them down. Numbers multiplied by one get no modifier. This is the base unit and doesn't necessitate any prefixes. Numbers multiplied by a thousand or one followed by three zeros get a kilo prefix, which is written as a small k. Numbers multiplied by a million or one followed by six zeros get a mega prefix, which is written as a capital M. Continuing in this fashion, numbers multiplied by a billion or one followed by nine zeros get a giga prefix, which is written as a capital G. And lastly, numbers multiplied by a trillion or one followed by 12 zeros get a Terra prefix, which is written as a capital T. Don't really worry about engineering prefixes for numbers greater than Terra because these are the ones you're most likely going to run across. 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. Get it? See the pattern? 1, 1,000, a million, a billion, a trillion, etc. These orders of magnitudes are where you normally put commas if you had to write the number out in longhand. Again, consider our original number of interest, 560,000, where 560,000 is 560 times 1,000, where 1,000 is a 1 followed by three zeros or 10 to the third. Get rid of the zeros and put a kilo or a small k in there. 560,000 volts expressed using proper engineering format is 560 kilovolts. Or again, the small k kilo prefix is equivalent to three zeros or a thousand. I say again, the kilo prefix means multiply the number in front of it by a thousand. As a means of comparison, consider the much larger number 560 million volts, which is 560 times a million, where a million is a one followed by six zeros or 10 to the sixth. Get rid of the zeros and put a mega or a capital M in there. 560 million volts expressed using proper engineering format is 560 megavolts, where again, the big M mega prefix is equivalent to six zeros. I say again, the mega prefix means multiply this number by a million. You track it so far? Let's try another example. Consider a resistor, a type of electrical component we'll examine in greater detail in later lectures, having a specified value of 10 million ohms. Look at where the commas go thousand million. We can represent this as 10 times a million or 10 times 10 to the sixth. Which prefix represents six zeros or a million? Again, we're inside the mega range, so 10 million ohms is more succinctly represented as 10 mega ohms. Before we move on to other examples, allow me to make a comment about the significance of dividing larger numbers up into groups of three. If you think about the coefficient, i.e. the lead portion of the number in question that actually carries information, Given a maximum of three spaces, we're effectively limiting the range of this coefficient to a low of one up to a maximum of less than a thousand, including non-whole numbers. If the coefficient is less than one, you should be using the next smaller prefix. If however, the coefficient is greater than a thousand, you should be using the next larger prefix. Long story short, if your coefficient is greater than one and less than a thousand, you're doing it right. If however, your coefficient is less than one or greater than a thousand, you're doing it wrong. Additionally, I'm encouraging you to think beyond the useful but clunky idea of multiplying something by a thousand, a million, a billion, and so on. I found a far simpler way of thinking about engineering notation is moving the decimal point left or right in three-step increments. Think of each engineering prefix as occupying a vertical column three spaces wide. Consider the original number. Expressed in the base units of volts, 560,000 volts has a decimal place right here. The actual part carrying information appears to be inside the kilo column. Take the decimal place intended for the base unit and move it three places to the left or positive three spaces. Tell everyone you move the decimal place left three spaces by using a kilo prefix, 560 kilovolts. Consider the second example. Expressed in the base unit of ohms, 10 million ohms has a decimal place here. The actual part carrying information appears to be in the mega column. Take the decimal place intended for the base unit and move it six places to the left or positive six places. 
tell everyone you moved the decimal place left six spaces by using a mega prefix, 10 mega ohms. If you think in this fashion, one can lay out any number of interest in a horizontal row and just see which vertical prefix column is the most appropriate. Let's try this technique on a selection of values, 2,200 ohms, 34,500 volts, and 1,500,000 watts. Look at all those zeros. If we had to drag this many zeros along with us all day, it'd be like carrying a 20-foot pine tree around with limbs and roots attached. Let's lighten our load a bit by placing these numbers in proper engineering format. Let's look at the first example, 2,200 ohms. If we overlay the number on the vertical columns associated with each engineering prefix, we see it straddling the kilo and the base unit range. If we move the decimal places left three spaces, it gives us a coefficient of 2.2, i.e. something one or greater and less than a thousand. A three decimal place jump left is a kilo, so this number might be more compactly expressed as 2.2 kilo ohms. Let's look at the next example, 34,500 volts. Again, if we overlay the number on the vertical columns associated with each engineering prefix, we see it straddling the kilo and base unit range. If we move the decimal place left three spaces, it gives us a coefficient of 34.5, i.e. something one or greater and less than a thousand. A three decimal place jump left is a kilo, so this number might be more compactly expressed as 34.5 kilovolts. Let's look at the final example, 1,500,000 watts. Again, if we overlay the number of the vertical columns associated with each engineering prefix, we see it straddling the mega and kilo range. If we move the decimal place left six spaces, it gives us a coefficient of 1.5, i.e. something one or greater and less than a thousand. A six decimal point jump left is a mega, so this might be more compactly expressed as 1.5 megawatts. Too easy, right? Here's another set of examples. This time you're on your own. So if you can place these unwieldy numbers in proper engineering format, where proper engineering format uses coefficient of one or greater and less than a thousand, and an appropriate prefix, representing its magnitude. Don't worry so much about what each unit represents right now. We'll examine the units and quantities they represent in later lectures. By all means, pause the lecture and try these examples by yourself. Now do not just sit there with a dumb look on your face and wait for me to give you the answers. Do what I'm telling you to do. Pause the lecture and try these example problems by yourself. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. Our first entry is better expressed as 2.45 megawatts. Our next entry is properly expressed as 9.1 giga ohms. The third one doesn't necessitate engineering prefixes because it's already appropriately expressed in the base unit. So 208 volts is 208 volts. Our next entry is more compactly expressed as 3.6 terajoules. And finally, our last entry is better expressed as two kilometers. All right, if that set went well, you're most likely getting a tentative hold on placing large numbers in proper engineering format. Where again, proper engineering format uses some coefficient, one or greater, and less than a thousand, and a prefix in front of the unit where each prefix represents a shift in three step increments, three, six, nine, 12, and so on. Let's now explore an additional utility of engineering prefixes. As I mentioned previously, engineering prefixes aren't limited to expressing only unusually large numbers in a more compact and usable form, they can also be used to make working with unusually small numbers easier, and dare I say, more enjoyable. Allow me to demonstrate, but first, a minor detour through Mathland might be necessary. The mathematically inclined among you may recall the significance of negative exponentiation. The mathematically uninclined may not. In this spirit, let us review negative exponents by way of a series of illustrated examples. Consider the expression two to the negative one. This means take one over two, and raise two to the first power. Two to the first power is two, so one over two is 0.5. Similarly, consider the expression two raised to the negative two. This means take one over two and raise two to the second power. Two to the second power is four, and one over four is 0.25. Lastly, consider the expression two raised to the negative three. This means take one over two and raise two to the third power. Two to the third power is eight and one over eight is 0.125. You'll note increasing the magnitude of the negative exponent, negative one to negative two, negative two to negative three, and so on, correspondingly decreases the result. 0.5 down to 0.25 down to 0.125 and so on. 
This concludes this brief review of negative exponents.